This is the High School Football Coaches Podcast by Max Preps, Episode 4. And we thank you for joining us on the High School Football Coaches Podcast. I am Steve Montoya, and on this podcast, we have Jake Plummer as our guest, and that name may ring a bell because he was a former NFL player, most known for his days with the Denver Broncos. He played for Arizona State, but his glory days are from Capitol High School in Boise. We're going to talk about uh, what his high school coach meant to him and what he's up to now he's got a product that helps coaches out there so here we go we got jake Plummer. all right well uh jake thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us here on the high school football coaches podcast and and we're going to get into what you're currently doing as a executive vp with ready list pro here in a minute but i want i want to jump back a little bit maybe you don't get asked this quite often but i want to go back to your days and in Boise, Idaho, playing for Capitol High School, and and what you remember um, being a teenager and playing high school football, and some of the memories you had back in back in Boise. Yeah, you know, uh, thanks for asking me about that. Not often do I get a you know walk down memory lane and think about really where I started playing real football. You know, I mean, I, as a youngster, I begged my mom to play uh, Pop Warner Optimist, we called it back in Boise. Uh, my, my argument was I'm, I'll be safer, Mom, if I have pads on because we're playing at recess anyway, playing tackle. So she eventually <laughs> let me put the pads on and play, play Optimist football in uh, that fifth grade. So, you know, the, the journey from there to high school was really about just playing ball and kind of learning who you are and seeing if you're tough enough to, to play and when I got to high school, that's when the real, you know, coaching and, and actual uh, football became um, kind of a, a way to, you know, obviously play another sport, but it started to, you know, materialize as a chance for me to possibly get a scholarship. So football got a little bit more important, but not as much as, as some people make it nowadays. Um, I can remember as a sophomore playing on the sophomore team, uh, we didn't have the greatest team, and we played a, a team in Nampa. Uh, who had a kid named Rob Morris who played in the NFL for a while. And uh, not often do two kids from Boise area get, get to the pros, but back then in the ninth grade, he was a beast. I think I went two of 11, and those two completions were interception pick sixes. So <laughs> I was horrible that day. I got hit a number of times. I got sacked a ton of times. I just got beat up like you wouldn't believe. I made a few plays here and there, but it was really – uh, our O-line couldn't block, and, and football was, was tough at the moment. So you speak of high school and high school coaches and, and people that have really made an impact in my life, and, and one of them is Steve Bogle, who was our head coach there at Capitol High. He coached there, oh, man, over 30 years. Actually had a chance to play in the pros uh, coming out of Boise State, so he knew what he was doing when he pulled me up to varsity as a sophomore. Even though I wasn't going to play at quarterback, his reasoning in you know retrospect down the road was that to pull me up off the sophomore team so that I didn't start hating football because I was getting beat up so he knew if I got beat up I was either gonna get hurt and stop playing or just hate playing so he pulled me up to the varsity it was great I got to play receiver in practice and scout team even got into the game at receive into a few games at receiver and had some mop-up duty as a as a backup quarterback uh, in spotty, you know, spots throughout the games uh, during the season. But that was really when I got vaulted up to real deal football. I was on the varsity as a sophomore. And thanks to Coach Vogel, he saved me from, you know, what could have been d d disaster staying on the sophomore team. And it was fun to get up there with the varsity kids and, and show them that I could hang and compete. And also to be coached by another great coach, Tom Swindell, who our, was our offensive coordinator. Uh, it was a lot of fun uh, to be on varsity as a sophomore. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And and a lot of times when we talk to former professional players, they, you know, it's the glory days 
and they actually say high school was is kind of the glory days even though they they ended up being professional players and and getting to the highest level but when they get to look back at at high school and their high school coaches what kind of impact that actually had on their lives as they progressed through their career it's amazing uh, just what high school coaches can do to young men and young women out there playing sports. Yeah, it's really remarkable. The, you know, you'd like to. I'd like to think everybody that played played football uh, got to have the kind of coach that I I had and Coach Vogel and Swindell and, and numerous other coaches on the staff that were really into our best. You know, our best interest was at their heart. You know, they coached us not to fit us in their schemes or their box or try to turn us into the players they thought we should be. They took our skill sets. They took what we did really well and they put us in position to succeed. And whether that was lining up in wing T because we had big fullbacks and running backs and big linemen, or if that was spreading us out and utilizing our, our quickness and speed and, and, and that sort of thing. We had, I had the, the, the privilege of having some really, really good coaches that had our best interest at heart. Uh, you know, my junior year, we won the state title, which was just a great season. I mean, we had some amazing athletes. One of the best football players I've ever even played football with, his name was Adam Alanese. He played defense and offense, scored five TDs in the state championship game, was just a smooth, amazing athlete, uh, fun to watch, fun to be on the same field with. But that was really fun, winning a state title as a junior. Our senior year, we lost by one point in the final Went for the extra point to tie it, and we missed the extra point. So, oh, man. <laughs> you know, my coach, I still – I talked to him just last week. You know, I keep in touch with Vogel all the time. We talk quite often, and I see him when I'm in Boise. But that it seems to always come up. You know, the glory days, you're right. I mean, that was really – you're playing ball. You're going to school. You're a high school athlete. You, you're, you know, you're balancing life and, and girlfriends and homework and – just growing up and becoming who you are as a person and learning a lot about yourself. And then you got sports to throw into that and time management. And, you know, we were, I was really lucky at Capitol high in Boise, Idaho to be an Eagle and to really have a lot of great coaches that maybe they weren't as knowledgeable as some other coaches, but they made it fun for us. They made the, the practice, uh, enjoyable at times. Uh, you know, I could think to some basketball practices I had that were not that enjoyable because our coach was, a hard hard work and grinder but now thinking back i think how lucky i was to learn how to work hard to learn how to tell my my mind have the power in my mind to tell my feet you know no you're not tired i'm ready to go i'm going to shut the baseline off if that guy goes baseline i got to stop him so had some great coaches that really taught me how to uh, evolve in the leadership position to, to be who i was to be myself don't change who you are be the leader that I was and they gave me that freedom to go out there and, and lead the teams that I was on and we had a lot of success so it was a lot of fun and I feel looking back on those glory days is always a great memory yeah and the you know the recruiting world now is a lot different than when you went through it but I, I read a story about how the uh, how Arizona State had to come through the snow to come find you <laughs> <laughs> how how uh how much of a role did your coach play in just your recruiting process and helping you make the decision to ultimately f land at where you landed? You know, I, I found out after the fact uh, that Coach Vogel, this was back before Huddle, before the sharing of video content became, you know, as easy as pushing a button. Right. You know, he sent out v VHS tapes to every single coach in every single school that asked for highlights oh, wow. or for game tape of me in high school. And I did not know this. So before my ju before my senior year, I went to the Stanford quarterback receiver camp. I really wanted to play for Bill Walsh. I really thought I was, you know, Joe Montana was my guy. I was going to yeah. be the next one. And I was excited to, to possibly be a Stanford Cardinal. So going to that camp really was the chance for me to get out in front of these other California athletes, these big athletes from these big schools, and prove that I could hang. So I did that, and that got my name out. So a lot of coaches were inquiring for information. And my coach, I did not know this, but he sent out VHS tapes to hundreds of schools that were interested. So, you know, a big hug to him after I found that out because, you know, ASU being one of those schools that was highly interested, they had a lot of guys on their staff, Bobby Petrino, Danny Cazetto, that had coached at University of Idaho, 
So they were always aware of kind of what was happening in that little northwest pocket there and aware of Idaho athletes that maybe they weren't all D1, but there were some that came through. And me being one of those athletes they saw potential in, they were the first call that was made that I uh, answered. I was asleep. My mom answered the phone. But uh, whenever the day well, it was, June 1st or July 1st, whatever was, was the first day they could call you, Arizona State woke me up early on one of the summer day, sleep-in days and, and offered me a full-ride scholarship. And, uh, you know, all in all, that's really why I went to ASU. That along with, as you mentioned, that, that uh, snowstorm story where Bruce Snyder <laughs> – he ruined a pair of floor shine shoes <laughs> yeah, back in the it. day. I didn't yeah. know what that meant. Like, what you shine <laughs> floor shine? You shine shine floors with your shoes, but <laughs> I was way off, man. I didn't know what that was. Patent yeah. leather was, you know, or anything like that. I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. But he looked me in the eye in my in, in my living room there in Boise, Idaho, and he told me. And you know, Coach Vogel was sitting there also. My mom, I think my brothers were there. Uh, you know, and said, hey, if you come to Arizona State, we feel we'll have a shot at a national title in your time there. And he was the only coach that said that. So for me, you know, going to another school that had been there or a big school that had a long line and history of, of, of guys coming through it was intriguing. But more intriguing and more my style was to go somewhere like Arizona State where I'd never really heard anything about them. Uh, you know, the only thing I'd heard about them was Jay Bradley got sent home in the fifth grade for wearing a Sun Devil shirt because the teacher said, we can't wear that stuff in school. It says the devil. So he had to go home and change his shirt. So that's all I knew about Arizona State. Yeah. And uh, going there with that, that, what Bruce Snyder told me, that was really the difference maker. And then being the first team that, that offered me a full ride scholarship on the very first day of, of offers. Ultimately, that was why I went to Arizona State and, again, got coached by some amazing coaches there also. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and as we transition now, and, and our, our podcast is aimed to, to help coaches uh, build a better program, you know, help them win, learn, learn new things in the space, and, and now you're an executive VP with Ready List Pro. Uh, why don't we jump into that and, and – uh, let you give a little breakdown of, of what it is and, and how it could help coaches. I know it, it, you guys have it at the NFL level, college level, but now even high school and the youth space. So if you don't mind, yeah. just kind of breaking, breaking it all down for us. Yeah, you know, you say Ready List Pro. That's our first – that was our very first version. You know, our, our idea behind this, it, it sprouted from my boss and the CEO, Chad Freehoff who played at the Colorado School of Mines and was the D2 player of the year. He won the Heisman mm -hmm. for the Division II, the Mines, and was a great player. Um, he went on, went on to pursue an NFL and a professional career, nine teams in seven years, uh, being thrown a big, thick playbook, said, here, go learn this. And him being an a engineer, a graduate from a hard, hard school to even get to, yet alone – graduate from he knew how to study he knew what it took to learn something and even he was struggling so that's where this whole concept was birthed was him having to struggle to try to learn these big thick playbooks it's all terms it's all words it's all norm nomenclature it's really the same thing across the, the board school to school and team to team there's no secrets as to offensive football plays it's just the terminology changes so he started thinking about a better way to, to study by utilizing multiple learning styles, uh, auditory, visual, tactile learning. We've even gotten on our, our uh, software competitive learning where you're scored, your scores can be compared to your teammates, so you want to get better when your teammates are doing better than you, you want to get better. Uh, back to what I was saying, though, about developing this was that the Rosetta Stone for a foreign language was what he kind of based his – first concept off of was, was a, a way to study and study as much as you want uh, in multiple facets, whether that's seeing the signal of the play and having to study that play or seeing, hearing the quarterback call the play and have to know the play, uh, moving guys around to get in their formations. That's tactile learning, which ups your retention rates tremendously. You know, we've, we put those all into one study tool but on the back end created a testing formula that randomizes the playbook and tests you immediately. So when you spend a 20-minute study in your plays, 
you can go and get tested right away and then know exactly what you retained and what you need to study more on. And, and the great thing is your coaches will know this also. They will be able to be able to take what you know and maybe not spend time on a walkthrough or practice going over that. Instead, they'll go target practice, make more efficient practice use of their practice time to, to you know run through the plays that the team is struggling on. So we started out creating this for a player but as we went to more conventions and more conferences, we realized I, that coaches really need this tool just to get organized, to get their playbooks uh, all in one spot, and then have that ability to test the kids to see where they stand. So it's been a fun process trying to you know, get the pro model and the, the concept in front of as many pro coaches as we could. You know, Hugh Jackson, uh, Adam Gase, you know, numerous offensive coordinators that I had connections with through my career. Uh, showing them our concept, getting it in at the, the, the Senior Bowl, having it used with Bobby Petrino, the Louisville Cardinals, and then Adam Gase using it last offseason with the pro players. It really proved we've got a tool that can span across the pros all the way down to the youth. And uh, now we have a youth app with a preloaded playbook. So the you know that dad that's now the OC or the head coach of his uh, youth league team that his son's on, he no, no longer needs to go search the internet and try to find some plays to run. We we provided that tool for you in a very affordable package that allows you to have a playbook to push it out to your kids across any device to go offline and even bring it out to practice. Uh, you know, we feel we got something that's going to help help these kids enjoy the game and raise their IQ levels, maybe uh, play faster, which I believe he leaves you less prone to injury. And then I think we're going to save a lot of time. We're going to save coaches' time. We're going to save a lot of parents' time and the players when they're out there at practice. You can, you know, you can work on beating your opponent rather than telling little Timmy where to line up and what route he has. You know, this tool hopefully will provide that that teaching that the kids need to go out and 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 ex excel on the field. Yeah, it sounds like uh, making practices a lot more productive is a key to what you guys are doing and. I recall playing. We you could spend thirty minutes telling, you know, two kids what to do, and there goes thirty minutes of your practice. So, if if you're a youth coach or a, or a high school coach interested in in learning more, uh, what do you suggest would be uh, first steps for coaches out there? Yeah, you know, there's our, our website. Uh, you said ReadyList Pro. Like I said, that was our first concept. But ReadyList Sports is our website. ReadyListSports.com. You can go on there and there's a tab for to see how it works, to, to get a demo and some pricing, to also go, there's a tab at the top that says Ready List Youth. So that differentiates between our high school version and our youth version. Uh, you know, our, our high school version is is near completion. We're, we're hoping for a launch on April 1st. So we've been getting some inroads with some local coaches here and in Arizona, Idaho, all the places that I, I got a lot of connections. and. Meanwhile, we're, we're gearing up, continuing to develop our college and pro model, which we know there's a use for. A lot of coaches are excited for us to get that done. So like you just said, you save time. You, you know where your players stand. There's no more hoping kids are accountable. When you send them off with their study books or their study tool here, they can study. When they take that test and hit submit, the coach gets it in his inbox so he knows, hey, these guys are ready. They're, they're studying hard. They're they know their stuff. Let's go, uh, you know, strategize now on on how to beat our opponent, or you know how to make sure that our slot receiver knows how to run a slant versus an inside technique. Instead of getting them lined up there and telling him what he has, let's start working on the game and the intricacies involved in how to be a better team and how to make the game more fun and enjoyable by succeeding out on the field. Yeah. Uh, and to everybody listening out there, we'll make sure we have links and where we post this and on our YouTube channel and everything else. We'll make sure that we got everything linked up so you can go right away to uh, Ready to List Sports to, to find everything that Jake's talking about. Uh, Jake, we really appreciate your time, uh, taking time out of your day to relive some of your glory days and, and break down a little bit about what you guys are doing to help coaches and teams out there. So uh, we're really appreciative uh, that you came on the High School Football Coaches Podcast with us. Hey, you know, Steve, the pleasure is all mine. I appreciate the, the time to rekindle some uh, old memories of my glory days as a high school athlete when I was 
I think I was weighing a smooth 160 back in high school <laughs> and, uh, you know, had to get bigger when I got to the, to college. But, you know, the, the coaches in my life, I've been blessed with some great coaches that, you know, they, they go find tools like the ready list or they go do that extra little bit to help me have success. So the coaches listening out there, you know, keep doing that for your kids. There's a small moment for them to play high school sports and uh, the more enjoyable you can make that win or lose. You know, the life lessons we take are so important, uh, you know, from high school sports. So thanks for the opportunity. Um, and listeners, follow us on, on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, all that. Ready List Sports, you can find us and uh, appreciate the opportunity. All right. That's Jake Plummer, everyone. Thanks so much. Right on. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. And again, we thank Jake Plummer for joining us here. Lots of good stuff going on with what he's doing with Ready List, and it was great to just listen to him talk about how important his high school coach was growing up. And although he made it to the NFL, played a long time in the NFL, his glory days are when he played high school football. We thank you for joining us on the High School Football Coaches Podcast. Remember, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube, we're on Max Preps, we're on everywhere. Wherever you think you can listen to this or watch it, we're there. Find us. <laughs> we got a lot of good stuff, and we got much more coming your way. I'm Steve Montoya. Thanks for listening or watching. <laughs>